All right, y'all, Grumpy is back. And uh, today we're going to be talking about RetroArch because with all this COVID stuff happening, I find myself playing some video games more than ever actually right now and doing some net play with some uh, <clears throat> online friends, things like that. So I've never tried net play before uh, and I've never actually used RetroArch on my PC. I um, usually always use it on a Raspberry. Uh, raspberry pi but anyways so a couple of things to um look out for here if you're uh trying to do some net play and you're using open sense or probably for that sake uh, pf sense as well i had a, a initially a rough time uh, opening the ports to host games so in net play you go into the network settings and you you know uh, host a game and uh, if you look online <clears throat> it tells you to forward the port that's in the netplay menu, which is, I believe, the default's like 55435. So that's a TCP port. And um, uh, just some weirdness uh, when I was trying to, you know, set this up. And uh, let's go through it and I'll show you what I found out. Okay, so just looking at my system here, uh, while RetroArch is running in the server mode and noticing that... Um, you know, ports 55435 are listening on IPv6 and IPv4. But not only that, um, you can see that UDP is also listening. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's supposed to be a TCP port. Why is it listening on UDP? And I guess it, by default, automatically bound itself to IPv6 as well. So that was the first weird thing that I saw. But uh, moving along here to the next. So I was trying from a test machine uh on, uh, on the outside, not connected to the same network, trying to log in to RetroArch to get it to connect, and it just wasn't happening. The netplay would all always say failed. Netplay failed to initialize, failed to initialize. So then um, I looked at the, uh, I said, okay, well, let me try an internal machine. So I installed it on another box inside the network, and boom, it uh, connects no problem. And as you can see on the screenshot here, it does seem to connect over TCP, um, using 55435, um, so I was a little bit confused on why it wasn't working when I had that port open and redirected to, to the machine that was hosting. So using some TCP dump skills here, I just wanted to see the traffic flowing through on the internal side uh, uh, when, I was, when I was running this. And yeah, as you can see, TCP dump was showing uh, tons of frames on uh, port 55435, which is obviously the hosting side, and then uh, another port, you know, 39,000, uh, whatnot there probably coming from the client side um, I didn't not I didn't restrict this by UDP so this seems to be TCP traffic uh, flowing through on these ports so I said okay well we know communication is happening uh, netplay was working so uh, let's move on and try to figure out what's actually happening here so while the netplay was running I just quickly did a TCP dump and uh, filtered UDP traffic and I wasn't getting anything so as far as I'm concerned at this point, uh, uh, RetroArch NetPlay was not using UDP to communicate for online play. So even though it's, it's strange that um, it's binding to UDP in the system, and you'll see later on that you actually see UDP being used at some point. But anyways, at this point, I said, okay, well, looks like it's straight TCP. So at this point, I'm kind of racking my brain. I'm looking at the logs and I'm saying, yeah, it's, I can see it's connecting internally. So why can't I get this port to redirect? Uh, you know, it doesn't seem right. I'm double checking to make sure my firewalls are off and you know, I don't have any run, anything weird running like that. You know, but at the same time, every time I'm launching uh, NetPlay, I'm still getting the fail to initialize coming from the outside to the uh, redirected machine on the inside. So I, I kept always getting this port mapping failed as well message, which I wasn't sure if it was BS or not. I'm not sure if that was just a false positive message, but uh, you know, this wasn't helping as well. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it knows that it's not being able to, uh, to bind to the port properly uh, to do net play. Before I get into this next section <clears throat> about UPnP, I already knew about UPnP and I read the docs and um, you know, UPnP isn't something I have uh, running on my firewall or router or anything like that uh, because of the dangers of using it, for things to be able to auto map things. So I said, okay, I, I was reading a bunch of documentation. I still could not get it working. So then I, um, I went on the OpenSense uh, plugin packages and I knew that there was a UPnP 
uh, module here. So this is the one. The, this is the one that you'll find in the OpenSense uh, repository there, the uh, Universal Plug and Play service. So I said, okay, well, I know I can't get it working right now. Let's just see what's up uh, if I install this uh, Universal Plug and Play service, and see what happens after that. Once you install it, it's fairly easy to get it up and running. Once it's installed, you just basically have to enable it, allow the UPnP port forward mapping, allow the NAT PMP uh, port port mapping as well, and then just basically tell it what your LAN and WAN interfaces are and, and save that. That's that's pretty much all there is to it. And um, after, after that, um, you can give it a shot. And I, I, I ran it again. And in that scenario, when I launched RetroArch and Netplay, I saw the port mapping successful message. So uh, automatically I knew that <clears throat> you know, it was probably gonna work. Uh, and it did, uh, looking at this next uh, image here, you can see that the port mapping to the external IP address I was trying to connect from has been established over uh, TCP, again, in the, uh, in the status here. And by looking at the status of the uh, UPnP service on OpenSense, it's pretty clear that NAT PMP is uh, taking over automatically here. And uh, basically using a UDP port and remapping it to the TCP port uh, of the listening uh, NetPlay machine. So yeah, um, I wasn't able to, and I know that in NetPlay there's a couple of settings where you can turn off NAT and turn on NAT in NetPlay. And I tried both of those settings. I still couldn't get this to work. So I guess uh, maybe this is an, an informational help video for somebody. Uh, what I end up doing is I just disable the the uh, universal plug and play when I'm not using NetPlay, and I enable it when we when we uh, uh, you know do some gaming. So I'm not leaving it on by uh, by default and just letting it sit there. That would be too dangerous. And uh, also. <clears throat> You can see that uh, on the firewall states, uh, also you can see the connections being made from the external IP address uh, to the internal uh, host. So seems to be all working. Um, I don't know, this is kind of just the way that I got it working. I, I'm not really familiar too much with the uh, NetPlay stuff and gaming in general. I don't know if this is a typical issues for gamers that they kind of have to eventually use uh, like UPnP for stuff. If you do know uh, of a way of getting this to work without uh, NAT PMP with the universal plug and play service in OpenSense, let me know. Uh, I haven't dug around in the forums or anything too much about this. Once it started working, I was just kind of happy and started playing and I just disable it when I'm not using it. All right, guys, that's another grumpy video for you. I hope it helps somebody and uh, see you in the next one.